Hello there, welcome to Craft with V. So this week marks the halfway mark in the 12 weeks of Christmas stitch along. We're using the gorgeous Maple Farm fabrics and this week we're going to be making this gorgeous little zippy pouch. So it's designed just to be like a little pencil case style um, pouch and you can use it to store lots of different things, makeup, tools, sewing, um, yeah, just about anything really. You can see there I put a little zipper pull on the zipper. Um, you've also got little tabs at the ends that you can hold to open it up. This is a smaller version of a larger one I designed uh, about 18 months ago. So I'll show you the larger ones that I have since made. These are also made out of Tilda fabric and they're actually um, a lot larger. But we're doing these to fit a smaller 8 inch zip. So that is the reason why I've scaled the pattern down a little bit as well. So what you're going to need to do this is your 8 inch zip. Um, and I'm using a white one because it'll go with this fabric that I've chosen. You will also need a couple of pieces of ribbon or some twill tape. They need to measure three and a half inches each and these are going to be used for your pull tabs on either end of your little your little uh, zipper pouch. You will then need two pieces of lining. Now these measure eight and a half inches by four and a half inches and so you have two of those. And then you will need your piece of main fabric and this measures eight and a half inches square. Now I'll pop all of these measurements down in the description box so you don't need to worry about writing them down. And you will also need a piece of fusible wadding, which um, in this case I'm using Parlan, and that is the same size and you need to fuse that to the back of your fabric. So that's eight and a half inches square. So you need to decide uh, where your top is going to be, so where your zip is going to be um, on your fabric. So if you have a directional fabric like I have, then you will... Uh, need to have it up this way. Now having said that, what will happen with your fabric, um, <clears throat> the way that the zip is designed to go in, is that you will get a repeat of your pattern if you have cut your fabric straight. So, and you'll see on the purple ones that I've done here, that we have a, a repeat of the pattern there. And that is because of the way that the pouch is made. So if you've cut your fabric nice and straight with the pattern nice and straight, you will end up with that beautiful look at the end. So what we're going to do is to get our zip and we're going to lay it face down on the top of our piece of fabric, our piece of Maple Farm. And I'm just going to pop a couple of clips on there to begin with, so just along that raw edge. Now I find clips work a lot easier um, in this instance than pins, but you will also need pins throughout this process of making this little pouch. Okay, so once we've clipped it along the top there, we're then now going to go and take a piece of our lining fabric. It doesn't matter which piece. Now I was having trouble finding which was the right and wrong side, but you need to lay it on top of here with the right side facing the right side of that fabric. So we're going to lay it like that. So then just simply line it up and then we just need to move our clips. Okay, now we're going to sew all of our seams with a quarter inch and we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew all the way down here. Now you will be able to feel where the zip is with the side of your foot of your machine. Use that as your guide. Now if you haven't got it straight the first time, that's fine. Don't unpick it. Just go back and then go down again until you've got it nice and straight. I've done it three and four times sometimes when the sort of zip gets in the way and, and tends to go off track. You can use an open-toed foot if you want to. I just tend to use just a normal sewing machine foot most times and it'll just follow the side of that zip down. So I'll go and do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've sewn down mine a couple of times just to make sure that I've got a nice straight line down through there. It does help as you're sewing to zip and unzip your little zipper so that you've got this bulky piece up one end, you can get this end nice and neat and then you can slide it along and then get this end nice and neat as well. It is a bit tricky when you're using with a smaller zip. If you're working with a much longer zip it will be a breeze um, but we're actually just trying to fit this zip to the project. Okay so what we're going to do, so that's how it comes off the machine, we're going to flip over our lining 
and we're going to flip over our fabric here and then we're going to take this to the ironing board and we're going to give it a nice hot press and then we're going to top stitch down through here and then we'll come back there we go it's all top sewn along there now what we're going to do is lay it on the table we're going to flip it around so that the zip is towards you and then we're going to fold up this zip so that it meets the raw edge so that it's looking like that okay then we're going to lay our next piece of lining on top of there and then we're going to make this three piece sandwich again and we will just clip it all the way along and then we're going to go and sew it on the machine the exact same way as we did the first one Okay, so that's all sewn. So what we're going to do now is reach inside and undo the zip. And then that will allow us to be able to turn it just for a moment. And that will then allow us to be able to iron that down the same way that we did the other one. So we're going to iron the lining down and the outer piece. And then we can top stitch along this side of the zip. So just all the way along there. This next stage can be very, very tricky um, if you're using a zip that's the exact size. So we're just going to show you here how to do it. I like to use the tip of my scissors to help me push that zipper. So we're just going to start to sew. There we go. So that's giving us that nice push through. So then I can just keep going like this. Now when we get to the end here, it's also going to be very tricky. Go nice and slow so you get a nice, even, straight stitch. Okay, so this is where it starts to get tricky. So we just need to keep pulling that up like this so that we've got a nice, clear way with our zip. And then same thing again, push it right through. Can you see there? So that we've got that nice opening. I've got my hand here and I'm pushing that zip way open. Now you just be careful here that you don't hit that big bulky bit of your zip. There you go. And now we're to the end safely. Okay, so we've got our lovely top stitching now either side of our zipper. So we're now going to turn it back so that the lining is facing up and we're going to take both our lining pieces and we are going to join them so that they are right sides together and you can see that the body of your bag is going to be down the bottom there. So we're going to grab our clips again and we're just going to clip along this eight and a half inch edge. But what we're going to do is we're going to leave a gap in the middle here for turning. So we're going to stitch from that end to around about here. Then we're going to leave around about a two and a half inch gap in the middle. And then we're going to stitch on the other end here as well. So go and do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so that's our lining stitch there. So now we're getting to the point where we're going to need uh, pins. So you need to fold your little uh, bag so that the lining and the outer are going to be meeting like so. So the zip is actually going to meet the area where you've just sewn your lining. But before we do that we need to put in place our pieces of tie or pull ribbon I should say, a little zipper pull things on the ends. So that's going to lay flat against your zip. So if you can see in there I've folded it um, I'm not going to have, this is a printed ribbon, but I'm going to have the actual pink side showing up. So I've got it folded so that the two raw edges of my little tab are going to be there against the raw edge, around about in the same line as your fabric, and we're going to pop a pin in it. Now I like to pop the pin way down low so that there's no chance that my sewing machine is going to hit it, but it's actually going to hold it there so that it's in the seam. So then we can get this all lined up so as I said the best way is to line up your lining your bit of lining there with the zip and that will make sure that you're nice and straight 
so then we'll just pop our clips up there like that and then we're going to sew along the edge here so we're going to repeat it for the other side now this other side is going to be much trickier because we're not going to have our zip closed it's going to be open so the best way to do that is the same thing get a pin and down a bit lower into the bottom of the bag but don't go too low because we need to be able to take this out you need to be able to pin together the zip area so if you can see there how I've got that pinned together so that the zip is going to remain closed up higher here so then we're going to take our piece of ribbon with the two raw edges and then we're going to place that there over the zip same thing we're going to pin that into place just make sure I'm not pinning my lining as well so it is tricky to keep that zipper closed at the same time because it does naturally want to pull open and then to get that piece of ribbon onto there as well now what I do tend to do is to take that over to the machine at this point and then sew it down into place with a scant 1 8 of an inch seam so that I've got it in place already before I go ahead and put the clips in to hold all this in place but that's entirely up to you now make sure that this seam is uh, going in the same direction on the bottom here so if the seam is going that way at this seam it needs to go the same on this side so make sure that they're in the same direction you don't want them at opposite poles apart and so then we're just going to clip this one as well don't worry about trimming it at this stage just leave all that in place clip it along and the same thing I want you to sew all the way down through there and then we'll come back okay there we go so I'm just going to reach in through the lining and I'm going to just remove the pin that I've got in there because we don't want to prick ourselves when it comes time to turn there we go there's the end of the pin there I'll get that out um, okay now before we do that we're going to trim so we're going to trim off this corner here don't go too close to your stitching and then we're going to trim off that corner I like to keep my fingernail over the stitching then that way I know I'm not going to cut the stitching and then I like to trim along here taking off a little bit of this bulk just so that it's nice and neat and that will also take off the excess part of your zip now I should have mentioned before that the best way to sew when you're sewing these ends is to make sure that your zip pull is in around about the middle um, but you will have worked that out because it would have been in your way but I'll have it there around about in the middle you can see there I've just turned over the corner of my lining there a little bit I could unpick it and fix it but I'm not going to bother it's not going to affect the bag at all but these things happen sometimes okay so we're just going to trim this one here Okay, so that looks pretty straight so what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the lining first so you can poke your little corners out somewhere here I should have a little paintbrush there we go there's my trusty paintbrush so that corner has got a little fold in it because that's where I made a boo-boo that's fine And we're just gonna pull it through. Whoops. There we go. So just poke those corners through. Whoops, wrong side. Now before we go any further, what we're going to do is take this over to the ironing board. Get rid of all those little loose threads. I'm gonna take it over to the ironing board and we're going to iron this little opening here so it's nice and neat we're going to um, iron those seams down then we're going to take it to the machine and stitch it down okay that's the lining fixed up there so what we're going to do now is we're going to pop our finger in and we're going to open up the bag with the zip and then we're just going to pop it through to the right side four corners 
use your little pokey tool, get those corners at lovely right angles. Because you've cut some of the bulk off, they'll be they'll be beautiful, nice and perfect. And then you just close your zip up and you have a beautiful little pouch. Isn't it adorable? So easy. Now the trickiest part of course is because you're using a zip that's almost the correct measurement that you need. To make it easier on yourself, if you have a longer zip, most definitely use it, then you can just chop it back. Um, that will make it easier. But we are teaching you how to pop in um, a zip with the exact size that you need um, at this point. But obviously, yeah, a longer zip will make your task so much easier. Now you can pop a little zipper pull on your zip there. Um, I have a container of them here. So lots of choices here for me. What will we put on it? Not a cat. I'll put cats on everything. We won't put a cat this time. Maybe we'll put that gorgeous little flower. How about that? And so these are called zipper pulls, if you want to look for them on the internet. And you just hook it onto your zip like that. There you go. That's your beautiful little zippy pouch. So I hope that you've enjoyed making this today. Don't forget, if you do complete this week's challenge, to make sure that you take a photo, pop it in the Tilda Lovers group on Facebook, and we will draw two prizes again uh, the following Sunday. So thank you for staying this long with me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.